Oh, right, right, right. What the hell's going on, everybody? And welcome back. If you didn't already watch yesterday's game from Serral's stream, go back and watch yesterday's video. But as we teased at the end of the last one, Clem was his immediate rematched opponent on the oh, same map. The only difference was opposite spawns and Serral frustratedly saying, oh, only ZVT today. Actually, only ZVT. I didn't play anything. Else. Actually, only ZVT today. A little bit upset by the fact that he is getting... Not only only ZVT, but also repeated matches versus Clem. And i got to say, I think Serral, I like to believe he's like us. And what I mean by that is that when he wins a game versus a guy like Clem, he goes, ah, oh, that was really hard. Made a sick comeback. And he kind of doesn't want to rematch him again. He's kind of hoping to run into a 6.5k Protoss where he's like, ah, oh, this is a bit more comfortable. I won't quite be at the edge of my skill limit the whole time. <laughs> Uh, you guys know like when you beat your buddy and you're just like yeah we're never playing again because like you know your buddy's better than you but you sneak a win off him and you're like it's good i'm gonna keep this record and they're like come on man you just just play play another game and you're like nah obviously Cyril's not pushing it that hard but i think he wouldn't have minded you know taking the the one zero win versus clem because that was a, a sick comeback and uh leaving it at that for the day but it's once again a good map for terran oceanborn it's a hard map for Cyril. But is it really that hard when you have that many trophies behind you? By the way, guys, are those trophies in his cabinet as well on the left? Or is that just the reflection of the trophies on the glass? It's got to be the reflection, right? How many how many bloody giant trophies? I mean, he has a lot of trophies, that's for sure. But yeah, <laughs> it'd be pretty sick if he's, if he's got like seven giant trophies like that behind him. Freaking legendary. I love the setup as well, just with this like little unassuming little couch with a cushion on it in the corner as well. He's like, yeah, this is where my dad likes to watch me play StarCraft sometimes. My brother, he comes over. And then I have my trophies, and otherwise it's just very minimalistic. Oh, Alright, so he's going for a hatchery first again. Pretty straight up build order. Looks like a 16 hatch from what I can tell. Chat saying, is this the stream where he played Gabe three times in a row? Well, Serral doesn't stream very often. This one was four days ago he streamed this from when I'm recording it. It should be about five days, I would say, from when it's uh, live on YouTube. So it's pretty recent. It's probably the only the only stream he's done really recently, I think. So doubt there's any other ones. I, uh, I heard this was where the best matches happened, though. And whenever I see him play Clem, I always go, ooh, yeah, let's check it out. I actually could have sworn he was going to lose that last game. As I did not check the results beforehand. Um, That's absolutely oh. tragically awful. That's absolutely tragically awful. Man loses two Zerglings to Reaper. Feels his soul disintegrate around him. Uh, when you got those exceptionally high expectations, it is what it is. But his third doesn't get blocked this time. That's cool. Oh, he doesn't want to lose any more Zerglings. Oh, he gets to the high ground, actually. Good Spore Trick as well. Greedy boy Clem doesn't get any more kills. Good handling. I, I, I really, this is what I admire about Serral is I think when a lot of us get frustrated, we play worse. And Serral, when he gets frustrated, seems to play better. I don't, it's not like he's like a John McEnroe where he needs to shout and scream and throw a tantrum to play his best. He's more of, it's more of like the quiet finish version of that. Where, like, he needs to get a little bit riled up, I feel, to just play his absolute best Starcraft. Especially when he's streaming. Because I think he's like, okay, I'm kind of... It's a bit more chill. I'm kind of interfacing with the audience and commentating for them. And, you know, it's, it's okay. But, like, <laughs> the moment he gets in a hard spot in the game and things aren't going his way, he starts being very motivated to shut down his opponent. Now, you notice the adjustment he's made. His Overlord was off the pillar, hoping to see if any Cyclones snuck out the front. And now he's actually going to try and sneak in for a sacrifice. Because he's like, look, well, if you didn't build two Cyclones first, I don't think you're doing the same Cyclone build. I'm going to check what you're up to. Because he's thinking, is it Banshees? Like, what's the follow-up here? And he does see a Depot on the Natural. But it's just started, so it should be three Command Center. You can tell because the Depot started after four minutes. He sees the third Command Center to confirm. And the two oh, barracks. 2 one, one. Two, one, one, he says. Yep, so he knows it's going to be heavy, 16 yes. Marines. Stim, two Matavaks hitting him at about 5 minutes 45 usually on a small map like this. 
You can defend that with Queens and Zerglings for at least the first two Medivacs, but if they get a few more Medivacs and Combat Shields, they could take you out if you don't have Banelings. Pretty rare to see that at this level, as they usually expect a guy like Serral to be well defended. Notice he's got his Queen split on the south and the north. Three Queens on the bottom on number two, four Queens on the right on number four, and he's got his Injecting Queens on number five. Right now, he only has one Queen on five, but you'll see him potentially add more Queens to that for injecting, but he also might use it to, to say defend a Liberator or a Banshee in the main or the natural. <laughs> Chat says, you get all that from that? Yeah, so basically if the Terran, technically Terran could build the depots in the back, but Terran wants their wall off as, as quickly as possible. So no Terran for a long time has built their depots anywhere but the wall off. And that's why just seeing the depot starting that late tells you there's a very fast third command center. Otherwise they would have started it at about three minutes 30. Otherwise, they get supply blocked on 46 supply. This is stuff Serral knows inside and out. And you know how I know this? Because the pro gamers tell me. Otherwise, I would never have figured out any of this on my own. I'm a moron. Um, uh, queens are getting transfused. Nice, nice, nice transfuses. Doesn't lose a single queen. Lots of damage on the medevac. That was a very good fight. Pretty much any deep knowledge about StarCraft I have is from the lovely community. Smarter pro gamers like me. Uh, Scarlet taught me that one. Scarlet's taught me a lot. Snoot, I think, was the first person who taught me a lot of the fundamentals of Zerg vs. Terran. But uh, in recent years, it's been Scarlet who's kind of kept me up to date, as well as the occasional tidbit from a Lambo or a Serral or a Rainer. If I could speak Korean, I'd probably learn quite a bit from, from all those guys as well. But my uh, conversations with the Korean players are a little bit more limited. Oh. Trying to get a fifth base up. His creep is getting denied a little. Remember, his creep control wasn't very good last game. You can tell this time, though, it's like he's fixing all the mistakes of the last game. Where he's like, well, I'm not going to let you bully me with just two medevacs. I'm just going to immediately fight down here and I'll chase you away. And I I'm happy to lose a few Zerglings for it as long as I get my creep further out. And that allows him to get a fifth base up. Now, look at his gases. You can see there's a gas missing in the main on the minimap and the third. It's a four gas style. It's the exact same style as last game. Thing is, Clem should be a little more prepared for the run buys this time. Speak of that, look at that. Hellion Reaper tank set up on the third. Macro hatch is out front of the third. Now you might be wondering why build the macro hatch out there? I think it's just because it's closer to reinforce. It's also easier for you to send your defensive queens to go inject on it. So if you if you get a moment to send queens back home, you like can dump like four or five injects on it all at once, queue them up, and then you don't really need to inject for the rest of the game. It's just like a, a lava fountain is what I like to call that. Nice drops there. Those Marines taking Baneling hits, hits and then picking back into the Vetivax. Clem, fancy micro. Intercepts that Baneling run by really nicely done. Oh, why did I let him kill my tumors? Oh, why did I let him kill my tumors, he says. Because he's like, hey, I have enough army to fight him. And my queens are out of position on the north of the map. I should never even uh. let him kill the creep tumors here. But now, because all of his queens have moved south, and his bigger army's on the south, he's like, oh, crap, I don't have enough units to really clean that up that easily. So you see he's splitting his army up. He's sending more units to the north. And you can see these numbers just above the wireframe down here, guys. You can see the size of his army. Main army on the left, 71 units. 45 units in the top right on number four. Now, he's got four queens on five. Those are his injecting queens. And he's got seven queens on number nine. Those are his defensive queens, which he's using to spread creep and try to shoot down any of these drops. Oh! Gets Banelings on three or four of those Marines. Not bad, not bad. Hive's on the way as well. He's taken a gas on his fourth base. So he's up on five, six gases. He took one in his main as well. Which means he can go to like Ultras. Last game he just went Hydras from here though. And then, and Vipers. Hydra Link Bane Viper is a very good comp. Oh, the tank. I love the tank being mixed in. Do you think that, I think that's the, the defensive tank from the third. I think it's the same Widowmind style as last game. I think he's just brought one tank to be annoying. Great move by Clem. Really great move. Okay, he's going to go for a counterattack. It's a good move. Dark would approve, mate. Dark would approve. Oh, no, there's a tank at home. Oh, Clem's doing a dual style. He's doing tank mine. He's building tanks and mines at the same time. This is awesome. This is a, a really good style. Hard for the Terran to pull this off, but if they do it correctly, I think it's like one of the best styles in ZBT. Widow mine's being spread pretty nicely there. Tank finally gets cleaned up. You don't want to lose these queens, though. Good pullbacks on the queens. He's got a spore on the left to stop the rotation into the main. And Serra does clean that push up. Oh, push on the left is scary, but he can't chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good choice to pull back. If he kept chasing, 
all those banelings were about to get focused down. Especially as they came off creep. Does lose a bit of creep control here. Oh, the focus fire for Clem is nasty. Of course, Clem changing targets there, trying to get bigger Widowmine hits, but several spreading was too good. He's going to take a 7th base, or 6th base, sorry, on the right side. Remember that base number 6 is hard to secure. He managed to do it last game. Clem is relentless, though, keeping him pinned on the defensive. And Clem's probably got a 4th up and a planetary on it by this point. Sarah doesn't even have the info to figure that out, because all he's doing is defending both sides, adding Vipers. Defending both sides, getting Adrenal Glands. Defending both sides, getting 3-3. Three, three. He just is trying to hang on and survive. And remember, he doesn't have a lot of anti-air. Oh, the Widow Mines coming so far forward. A risky move for Clem, but it may pay off big time. Uh, definitely great spreads, considering how little time he had to spread his units out. Nice transfusers in the main as well. Clem is trying to get some chaos going, and, and be, uh, it's just not happening. He's trying to kind of play like Beyond here and get big mistakes to happen, but yeah, it's not going down. Oh, double parasitic bomb. Get out of here. All those medevacs go down. The one in the top, I think, should go down as well. I think it barely dies, and Serral has just got a massive control over this game. Don't get me wrong, Clem's attacking, he's in his face, but Serral's just so used... And look at that! He assumed there was Widow Mines behind, so he just spread on both sides. Okay, he, we found Widow Mines further to the left than he expected, did take a decent hit, but he'll clear that up straight away. And that's what he's looking for. Whenever he pushes Clem back for overextending, he re-establishes control by clearing Widow Mines, spreading creep, and moving forward to make it harder for Clem to do that again. Oh, this is just lovely play by Serral. I love it. Whenever I compliment Serral, I know there's always somebody who's like, Stop riding him! Yeah, you just- You want- You love Serral so much, why don't you just kiss him? Ping! <laughs> and I'm like, I love good StarCraft play, guys. It's the reason why there is a meme of me shouting, Duck! And sounding a little bit like I'm having a, a moment to myself, uh, like I'm getting myself pregnant or something, because that man pulls off some of the most incredible comeback plays of all time. But Serral, when it comes to clean, controlling play, that does not let his opponents Get control of the game. He is one of the very best. Uh, there's Banelings on the left. Get some pretty decent hits. He's trying to go in. This is a crazy attack. Get out of there. Serral is overcommitting right now. Yeah, as that army comes back, he does run away. He's denied the fifth base. He's on six base against four. So he, as long as you're maintaining a two base advantage, he's trading not efficiently, but well enough. For this matchup, I believe that he, I think he's in a good spot. Hydra's coming in now as well. Oh, no. He's got both Hydra upgrades on the way. His movement speed is a little slow. The Marauders are being a bit of a nuisance. Ghosts are coming out. I don't think Ghosts are that important right now. It's more just about the numbers oh, game. Those yeah. Widow Mines trying to fire. He also paused the tank production. Did Clem. So it looks like maybe it was just two tanks from the very early games. Ooh. Oh, double Parasitic Bomb. Great spready on the Medivacs though. When, whenever Clem doesn't have to do anything else at the same time, he does defuse those parasitic bombs pretty well. Oh, this Widow Mine's got some nice hits, though. That was kind of painful to deal with. The Hydra's clean up most of them. Oh Happy to sacrifice God. the Bailing to get rid of those Widow Mine, that last oh, Widow Mine. Clem's going to chase because the man's a mad lad. Remember, Clem and Chill are two. It's an oxymoron, you know. That's uh, oh, the, 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 Those two terms it. are mutually just, exclusive, they cannot belong in the like same room. Yeah. Clem always has that knee bouncing up and down. You know, he's got that nervous leg syndrome. He's like, let me micro, let me micro, let me kill Zerg, let me kill Zerg, let me kill Zerg. Go to attack, go to attack, go to attack. He does not like to defend. But he's got his fifth base established now. Serral's only on six. Serral would like to get a bit more creep control. Attacking was good to really put the pressure on his opponent. And it brought in time for Infestors. Oh, I love it. Rather than focusing on Lurk attack, he said, well, what won me last game was Infestors. Why bother with the Lurkers? They don't do anything against Clem's amazing ghost play. Just go straight to Infestors. That, that's what won me the last... Oh, no, he went both. Never mind. He, he does have lurkers. Pig's an idiot. Uh, great commentary here from Pig and Clem. It's his map here. Oceanborn's good for Terran. Oh, the Widow Mines get some friendly fire. Spore's dealing with the Lib. I love that. In the middle of a fight, dodging Widow Mines, he checks the Liberator. Man is an absolute psychopath. Built different. I don't know what they feed these Finnish kids. It must be like reindeer, reindeer sausages for breakfast or something. There's uh, there's something that's making his brain work a little bit better than mine does. That's for sure. Over on the right side. Marine Marauder coming in along with those Widow Mines. Lurkers with some splashies getting some decent hits. That's a good cleanup for Clem. Oh, he does lose a few units. Though those last two Lurkers with their Ling Reinforce. Kind of hard to deal with. And another Ling Bane Hydra Army on the left ready to push in. Oh, I don't know if he has enough to kill a base, does he? Oh, there's no Widow Mine there. 
Oh my god, okay, he's just gonna go for the boom boom on the planetary. He's trying to spread the bane link so they don't get focused down. Clem is focus firing a lot of those banes before they connect. I love how he just has a few SCVs repairing. Yeah, that's that's why that's a bad move. Oh, he barely saves all three command centers. Serral! That, that was just too small of an army to be sure that he could take out a planetary. That, that was just too small of an army. Oh man, even if he just got the orbitals, I think that would have been super worth it for Serral. But he ends up throwing away a lot of units there for not much gain. He's not maxed out right now. That might be Clem's ticket back into this game. Clem has been on the back foot for a while, but now... Oh, great Widow Mine hits as well! Oh, Serral's lost a bit of momentum. He's lost a little bit of control. Ooh. Oh, man. Lurker Harass. Always, always a good move to come with Lurker Harass against Clem, especially when Clem's been on the back foot. You know he struggles with scans, but he has at least five orbitals up right now. So we know he has a decent number of scans in this game. And it looks like Serral's going to split another Ling Bane Hydra army to take out that left side. The thing is, if he blows up the, uh, the, the, the actual things this time, the orbitals, that'd be great. That EMP misses those Vipers by a solid three inches of screen space. Uh, a couple hundred meters in terms of unit terms. <laughs> Not the best EMP for Clem. Clem's still trying to push the north. Serral's trying to defend with a much smaller army while he blows up the bottom. He's in sense tower range. He's got to go. Serral's got to go. He's got to go. Oh my god! Okay, beautiful spready against the Widow Mines there. And he's going to blinding cloud as well. Oh, he blinding clouds the planetary fortress. The Bailing's getting on top. Parasitic bomb on top. He gets rid of the planetary. If he can click that orbital, that'll be massive. The orbital taking damage, but it survives. Oh, good defense by Clem. He just lifts the orbital over. I think he saved a lot of the SCVs. I don't think that's that's game ending damage or anything like that. Still good for Serral because he has that seventh base on the left. And more importantly, there's no libs harassing him. There is no pressure on Serral's side of the map. So he's got time to do these little bonus tasks. His creep in the middle, amazing. He's borrowing Zerglings on the new bases for Clem. He's doing all the little things that he needs to do to make this game successful. He's even going to take a forward base in case Clem turtles up. Building spores in advance of Liberated Sieging. Um, this is this is really, really good usage of the fact that he put Clem on the defensive and he's going to attack the south again. He does need more reinforcements up north. You can see he split a few units up there and he's going to go for it. Okay, here we go. No many, no Widow Mines here. That orbital's still looking very vulnerable. Hydras are going to take out the Libs and the Ling Bane is going to roll forwards. Nice EMP. The Vipers still have a bit of energy. He has to pull out of here because he doesn't have his entire army. He's going to pull back right now. He's pulling his whole army to the south. I feel like his lurkers, or he could even attack the, the northern planetary. Clem pulled his whole army to defend. Oh, okay. Clearing up a widow mine of those lurkers moving forward. Trying to move the creep forward as well. Lurker on the left does get cleaned up. These lurkers are going to move forward. Oh, he's going to keep clearing these. Beautiful. He's got three widow mines in range. So he's clearing widow mines with lurkers from out of range. And there we go. He's going to move all the way forward. Getting map control. Now getting creep on that high ground on the top right. Over on the left, this is where the focus is. Army versus army. It's five base Clem against seven base Serral. You maintain a two base advantage. You're looking good. Oh, and he's got a burrowed boy in behind. We haven't really seen the infestors do much this game. Does set off one of the Widow Mines. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Massive attack. Oh my god. Banelings, can they get on top? Oh, the ghosts do manage to pull away. He's going to send a lurker in on the top at the same time. Good pullback on those ghosts. I don't think he has an overseer right now. The ghosts are cloaking. He maybe could have tried to manually detonate on them, but he's just going to run past. Look at that. Focus firing SCVs with a harassing lurker while the fight goes on. He's like, where are my overseers, man? He finally morphs a few overseers, but those ghosts actually did a pretty good job of killing a lot of the units. Nonetheless, Serral is denying massive amounts of income. He's still got a lurker on the right side as well, so I would like to see him use that. Uh, to try and focus fire the SCVs. He dodges the Liberator. Perfect timing to look at it. He's going to try and take that base as well. So he's going to try and expand to the forward bases while continuing to deny this one. Amazing. Clem tries to retake it. This man is actually insane. He's going to attack on creep. Absolute psychopath. Clem has no chill at all. The man does not know how to keep it in his pants. And despite that, presenting Serral with a big fungal actually works in his favor. Because Serral gets too eager, doesn't dodge the Widow Mines, and actually takes a massive Widow Mine hit to the face. Serral's not maxed out. Clem has a sixth base up and starting to mine. Oh my lord, Serral needs... He's got another Burrow Boy there. He's got another Burrow Boy. He's got another Burrow Boy! Oh, big hits, but most of the units get saved again. Serral's getting edged right now. He's like, oh, I'm almost there. And then Clem's like, lol, nah, picks up, runs away. 
the lol nah terran pickup maneuver but he keeps attacking and giving him another opportunity clear <laughs> you don't need to keep attacking you can at some point holster your gun and walk away <laughs> oh man clam got caught in the final fungal catches him off guard it's so hard, so Cyril. This map is tough, man. Let's listen to Cyril's analysis here at the end. This was an amazing, amazing game once again. He was really dominating, but at about 15 minutes, he lost a lot of momentum. Let's hear what he has to say at the end about how hard this was. The, the verse Clem ZVT experience. <laughs> it's so, this is so many units non-stop coming my way here. What the hell? It's so hard. Seiko is pretty good still. Yeah, I was winning really hard after the one point, but I messed up real big time. Yeah, around 15 minutes is where he messed up. He had a, a series of bad fights. All right, so there wasn't too much more analysis from that point. He just started reading out subs, but that was awesome. Really good gameplay by him, man. Uh, a few good moves. I, I definitely feel like as good as the fungal traps are, you have to be wary. Because if you don't have Banelings nearby or multiple Fungals, they will pick up and you damage a lot of bio, you damage the Metavax, but they pull back and they can take the time to heal up. That being said, better creep control that game. And I think one of the big interesting things I've learned from these games personally is how adamant Sarah was that, hey, if there's a double drop of Marines, but I have a big pack of Ling Bane, the Terran doesn't deserve the right to clear creep. And that's what he was fixing in game two compared to game one. And the one or two times where he did let Clem clear creep, he said, why did I let him kill those tumors? He was kind of saying, dude, I've got a big Ling Bane army. I should be able to just shut all of this down. So I really liked that approach from him. And I think just his ability to get his creep further out this game to be a bit more uh, controlling of the map and to actually, you know, just handle the mid game, put him in an amazing position to finish things off. Despite that, Clem's a monster who just does not stop microing and attacking and putting pressure on. So what a fantastic match. And hats off to Cyril for getting the 2-0. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll bring you guys any more highlight point of view casts from any of these top players who have exciting games on stream. If you guys see one, don't forget to shoot me a message to let me know. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next video. Goodbye and good night.